testimony tonight come on declare it all fear is gone that's it because I know and life is worth yeah come on everybody lift your voice and say because he yourself tonight. He lives. Every bit of fear. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know. He holds, he holds the future. And life, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Everybody put your hands That's grateful to know he lives. I don't know about you, but I serve a risen Savior. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I hear you out there. Y'all sound good. Come on. I want to hear the audience. 
audience one more time. Come on, I hear you. Let me hear you. Because y'all sound wonderful. That's it. Ring it out. Every bit of fear. Because I know. And life, and life is worth living. And life is. We give God glory and praise if we can stand in the sanctuary. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know the Lord, he is God. God has made us and we did not make ourselves. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. So we enter into its gates with thanksgiving. And we enter into its courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we bless his name for the Lord is good for the Lord is good for the Lord is good his truth and his mercy endures to all generations let's bow our heads in a word of prayer God we thank you for this opportunity to worship you this day in spirit and in truth bless us this day that you might be glorified in our praise in Jesus name we pray amen how many of you brought your song of praise with you tonight? I heard this side. How about that side? Anybody brought your song of praise with you tonight? Hallelujah. Let me ask this question. Does anybody have a reason to praise God in the house? Has God been good to anybody? Has he breathed the breath of life in your body? Has he sustained you? Has he provided for you? Has he made a way for you? Somebody, everybody ought to give God a shot of praise. The song says, I sing praises to your name, oh God, for your name, not my name, but your name is worthy. It's great and greatly to be praised. Come on, everybody put your hand together right here. Real simple song goes like this, it says, I sing praises to your name, oh God, praises to your name. my personal testimony oh lord hey for your name is great and greatly to be praised come on levi so sing it together i sing praises to your name oh lord oh lord praises to your name
your name, Lord. And greatly to be praised. I sing praises. I sing to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Glory be to the Father. Oh, Lord. Oh, seated in the presence of our Lord. I greet all of you in the joy and peace of Jesus the Christ on this blessed Lord's day that he has made and he has created. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Just look at a neighbor to your left or right and say, neighbor, I'm glad to see you. Come on, look at somebody else and just say, I'm glad to see you. Yeah. Somebody just say, I'm glad to be seen. Uh, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. If you're in watching us virtually, just say, I'm glad to be in worship one more time. One more time, because this is the day the Lord has made, and every heart will rejoice. 
and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I've been looking forward to worship all day long. I felt like the old folk. It was just another day the Lord has kept me. And because the Lord has kept me, I just want to go into the house of the Lord. And if I come virtually or in person, I'll say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is there anybody who just say, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. This day, this moment, this second, this opportunity, I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm glad to see all of you. If all the pastors of the pastor's council, if you can stand and let's give God the praise for all the pastors who are here tonight and representatives, God bless all of you, amen. God bless all of you. It's offering time in the Lord's house. And we set a goal this year of raising $15,000 to facilitate and granting scholarships to much um, deserving students within our congregation. Last year, we were privileged to give $12,000 worth of scholarships. And this, amen, amen, amen. And this year, we're aiming to give $15,000 worth of scholarships. What we do is we worship every Wednesday during Lent. And it's through the worship experience that we preach and we worship and we raise an offering to pool our resources together so that we might support our youth as they pursue higher education. There are many ways in which you can give. If you're in the sanctuary, you can give through uh, the basket system. Um, you can give through cash. You can make checks payable to the Pastors Council of Greater Springfield. If you want to give electronically, you can give through Givelify, Pastors Council of Greater Springfield. You can give through Cash App, dollar sign, Pastors Greater SPFLD. However you choose to give, we thank you for your generosity in giving. After we repeat our offering affirmation, I'm gonna ask everyone to please stand. And if you're seated in the outer two sections, if you can turn and face the outer walls, and if you're seated in the center two sections, if you can turn and face the center aisle, and we'll be led under direction of our ushers. We're asking everyone who can, please give at least $25. We're asking all the pastors, as we know what we have been charged to do. I'm thankful for Mount Zion Baptist Church. They're starting the offering off tonight with $500. Amen. If we're able to stand, please stand. Every Sunday, we repeat our offering affirmation, and it's befitting that we repeat it tonight. Repeat after me, God, empower me to earn through multiple sources of income. Empower me to give at least 10%. Empower me to save at least 10%. Empower me to invest at least 5%. And empower me to live wisely on 75%. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be led under direction of our ushers.
let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this offering we have received. We ask that you might bless it as it is, it is used to make disciples, to encourage our youth as they pursue higher education. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your generosity in giving. I'm elated to have with us this evening as our guest preacher, Bishop Talbert Swan. Amen. The second who really represents Springfield on an international, national, and regional, and local level. Related, amen, amen. And not just represent us, but represents us well. He serves as the international chaplain for the I Theta, Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated on the international level. On the national level, he serves as the director of social justice ministry for the Church of God in Christ. He's a presiding prelate of the Greater Vermont Ecclesiastical Jurisdic Jurisdiction uh, of the Church of God in Christ. He's also the president of the Greater Springfield NAACP. Amen. Amen. That does incredible work. And he's the pastor of Spring of Hope Kojic here in the city of Springfield. After selection from our praise team, we pre prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word that God has given him, that he might deliver it to us. Amen. There's a very familiar movie that I think probably everyone in here has seen many of times, and there's a particular scene in this movie where there are two characters in a field, a character by the name of Sophia and a character by the name of, what's the other one? Celia, y'all saw the movie. Sophia begins to go on and to tell uh, Celia about her, a little bit about her testimony. She asked a question of Celia. She said, you told Harpo to beat me? She said, all my life, y'all saw the movie, I had to fight. She goes on to tell her, I had to fight my father and I had to fight my uncles and had to fight my brothers. And she begins to just say all of these things that have to go through and I will not I refuse to have to go through everything that I've been through and still have to fight in my own house and I'm convinced that many of us in this house tonight although we may not be in the field talking to to Celie many of us have the testimony that I've been through this and I've gone through that and I had to traverse through this I found myself for many days, weeks, months, and even years in my life having to fight the devil, having to run from the enemy, having to bind and having to rebuke and having to go through all of those things. But the encouragement and the blessing in all of it is knowing that even though the devil was fighting me, I had God protecting me. Do I have a witness in the house? And so because I have this realization, because I have this ability to say that God was there protecting me and covering and keeping me all the time, my testimony tonight is all my life you've been faithful. You've been so good to me. Watch this. Even when I was unfaithful to him, he was still faithful to me. And so if that's your testimony, before we receive the word of the Lord tonight, can you just lift your hands and worship the God that has been faithful to you? We've praised, we've celebrated, but can now all of the worshipers in the house just begin to thank and praise him for being good. Praise him for his goodness. Worship him for his kindness. Not just for the things he's done, but just because he's God. Come on, lift your voice and worship him. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. You've been good. You've been kind. There's nobody like you. Come on, raise your voice, worshipers. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We worship you, Father. We honor you. We bless and adore your holy name. That's it. That's it. Create the sound of worship in this house. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of my God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For your mercy never fails me. 
all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Now, if you know anything about the goodness of God, put your hands together and give him praise. 
just look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord has shown up. Now, I know we're in New England, but I need you to get your Mississippi twang. I need you to go way down to Georgia, Alabama, North and South Carolina and say, neighbor, the Lord has shown enough been good to me. If you believe it, put those hands together, give God praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty. We praise God for another day that he has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to church. He, 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 he got happy just because somebody invited him. I wonder how ecstatic we ought to be to actually be in church. Amen. To the president of the Pastors Council of Greater Springfield, the Reverend Catherine Cummings, we celebrate your leadership. To the officers and the members of the council, thank God for you tonight. To the host pastor of this great church, the Reverend R. Two White, we praise God for you, sir. And to each of you that have come tonight, we thank God for you. I felt a whole lot better when my wife came in and came and sat next to me. Praise God for First Lady Cynthia Swan. Amen. I want to preach for a few moments. I have never in um, over 40 years of preaching, I know I don't look that old. Uh, but if the Lord uh, let me get to November of this year, it will be 43 years since I preached my first sermon. And in those 43 years, I have never preached any longer than three hours. And I guarantee you, I'm going to come far below that record tonight. One verse of scripture in your hearing, John chapter 11, verse 25. If you don't mind standing in reverence to the reading of the word. Read from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life those who believe in me even though they die will live I want to preach from this subject uh, just look at somebody in the eye if you owe them an apology or some money and you can't look them in the eye just look at the bridge of their nose and repeat the subject and say a resurrection faith in a Good Friday world. You may be seated. The Lenten season is one of the high holy seasons of the Christian faith. And as followers of Christ, we commemorate and celebrate during this season leading up to the resurrection, the time we celebrate the resurrection of Christ from the dead. 
Jesus' resurrection represents an insurrection against injustice, evil, sin, and death. Sisters and brothers, we need to know that God always has the last word on suffering. And as soldiers of the cross and followers of the Lamb, we rejoice in the resurrection and the liberator who has put a comma where death tried to place a period. So when we come to church during this season, uh, we are mindful of the fact that he got up one day. This liturgical moment reminds us that the gospel of the resurrection is good news. Matter of fact, in the Greek, it means to bring good news, to preach good tidings. So during this season, I come to announce that when the forces of death declare the end, Jesus victoriously responds, it is to be continued. And therefore, though we might live in a Good Friday world, we walk by a resurrection faith. And my first point in this sermonic presentation, if you don't mind telling a different neighbor, uh, tell them, neighbor, we must realize that we live in a Good Friday world. What's a Good Friday world? I'm glad you asked. A Good Friday world is a world full of suffering, questioning, unfairness, trouble, mistakes, hurts, losses, and grief. We live in a land where natural disasters bring destruction on the just and the unjust alike. Our country is experiencing a crisis of an order uh, that it has not seen in many decades. One where strife and moral collapse and economic depression and deep political division have left many people in deep despondency as well as in a very angry mood. Everybody seemed like they mad at something. First thing in the morning, on your way to work, somebody mad in traffic. Somebody mad at the grocery store, mad at the gym, mad when you get home, just mad. The forces of death, the pain of grief, and the confusion about what God is doing in the midst of senseless suffering darken the landscape in many of our communities. The forces of death seem to have the last word when our youth are victims of violence. I've presided over and participated in far too many funerals of young men whose lives were aborted by gunfire, not on some foreign battlefield, but on the home turf of their own community or at the hands of those who are charged to protect them and serve them. A few years ago, I led a prayer vigil in March Against Violence in this community, dominated by the forces of death. We marched from right here at Dunbar down State Street, up Hancock, across Union, and in just that small portion of the city, many of the murders and shootings took place within the proximity of schools, churches, community centers, pharmacies, and homes where our families live, work, and play. We live in a Good Friday world where the forces of death seem to be running rampant. Then in addition to youth violence, there is domestic violence as an elephant in the living room of our community and even in the church. It has resulted in the forces of death claiming the lives of many whose silent screams were heard too late. Families are devastated. Children are emotionally confused and broken. And friends are consumed by guilt and regret when the worst happens and a victim.
victim of domestic violence loses their life. On top of youth and domestic violence, we've got the prison industrial complex. It consumes the lives and aborts the potential of many of our men and women. The forces of death manifested in injustice have robbed many of time and of life. The church in the face of these Good Friday realities must announce some resurrection good news. But how can we do this, Pastor Hill? Uh, we, we can't just fake it till we make it. We, we can't just tell people what they want to hear. We can't just do wishful thinking and, and pour sweet syrup on blood-drenched situations. Some way, somehow, in the midst of Good Friday tragedies of our community, we've got to help people experience the remembrance of a redemptive past and the conviction of a liberated future. The good news helps people to see tragic events through heaven's eyes. You see, before the advent of psychological sciences, the power of the gospel had the ability to sustain a people in the midst of tragic circumstances. I'm convinced we've got to put some emphasis on the good news. Instead of quoting Oprah and Dr. Phil, and trying to have Iyanla fix your life. You ought to quote what the good news says. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. By his stripes we are healed. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Fear not, little flock. For it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. First, we got to come to grips with the fact that we live in a Good Friday world. Nobody's going to make it through life on flower beds of ease. Life is not going to be all sharps and no flats. No one's going to go through life without experiencing some suffering and pain. Come here, Frankie Beverly. Help me preach a little while. Joy and pain. Come on, help me now. Sunshine and rain. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody's going to get through life without a little bit of pain. Mm. We have to come to grips with the fact that we live in a good Friday world. But second, we must realize that we must get through Friday if we're ever going to get to Sunday. Tell somebody, neighbor, if you're trying to get to Resurrection Sunday, you got to go through Friday first. But pastor, how do I live like he's risen? when I feel dead inside? How do I dance for joy when I'm knocked down to the floor? How do I celebrate resurrection when I'm living in a Good Friday situation? How do I keep my head up when I'm dealing with betrayal and false accusations and standing alone when friends should have surrounded me? How do I act like I got the victory when I'm being beat down and tortured and living in pain and having to keep my mouth shut instead of speaking up and defending myself. 
Well, my brothers and my sisters, Good Friday is when the sky in your life grows dark and you have to deal with despair, shame, anguish, guilt, hurt, regret, and a feeling of uselessness. But I have to tell you, there's no Sunday until we go through Friday. There's no such thing as a testimony without a test first. There's no such thing as a resurrection without a death first. There's no such thing without a, a resurrection Sunday without Good Friday. And see, here's the problem. Too many of us want a crown. But we don't want to bear a cross. We want to lose weight but we don't want to go on a diet or go to the gym. I'm messing up my church today. We want nice things, but we don't want to save money or build our credit. We want recognition without accomplishment, degrees without studying. We want titles we haven't earned, money we haven't made, accolades we don't deserve to be handed, things we didn't sacrifice for. We want Sunday morning blessings, but we want to skip by Friday night. We want gain with little or no pain. You got to understand that pain is valuable. Pain will make you appreciate what you gain. We are protected by pain. See, pain in the body is a signal. It's an alarm that something is wrong. Without it, you would die from neglect. Not only are you protected by pain, but you're purified by pain. Pain will insist you stop your daily routine. Pain will cause you to stop and think. Pain will cause you to look at your priorities. Pain will bring you closer to the Lord. That's why the prophet Habakkuk said, in their affliction, they will seek me early. Have you ever noticed? How close you get to God when you're going through? When everything is gravy, the cheddar is flowing, and all is right with the world? Y'all act like you don't know who the Lord is. But soon as a little trouble come your way, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know uh, pain will bring you closer to the Lord not only are we purified by pain but we profit from pain it requires pain to grow 1 Peter 5 and 10 says but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that we have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen settle you in order to get to the victory of Sunday you got to go through the pain of Friday my final point sisters and brothers is that we've got to learn how to exercise resurrection faith in good Friday situations See, this powerful and pregnant phrase speaks to a community and a nation hurting from racial divisions, from violence, from hatred, from disdain for the poor and the disenfranchised by folk who supposedly love the Lord. And we are reminded that in the face of Good Friday's contradictions, we must bear a resurrection faith. Resurrection faith empowers us to move through the darkness, trusting that 
that God will have the last word. Well, let me get to this text real quick before you accuse me of violating the principles of homiletical theology. <laughs> so in our text in John eleven twenty five, it's a resurrection announcement to a distraught and grief-stricken sister who is in the midst of her own Good Friday experience of pain and contradictions. Martha and Mary had sent word to Jesus that their brother Lazarus was gravely ill and Jesus did not rush to the bedside of the one he loves. In other words, Jesus tarried for a little while. And some uh, asked the question, why would Jesus tarry? Well, if I do a little redaction criticism, that's where uh, you can surmise things from the text as long as they don't do damage to the text. I would surmise that Jesus was thinking about when he raised Lazarus's, uh, when he, rather when he raised Jairus's daughter. Order. You remember that when he came and went into the room and said, Talitha kumai, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Well, she wasn't dead that long. So some folks said she wasn't really dead. She was just sleep. Probably thought about when he raised the widow of Nain's son. And then somebody said, well, he wasn't really dead. He was just in a coma. Uh, this time, Jesus waited four days. Uh, he waited until they had already wrapped him in grave clothes. Um, he waited until they already had the funeral and went to the repast and ate chicken and drank red Kool-Aid. Uh, he waited until it was all over, until they had put him in the tomb and rolled the stone up to the tomb. And so here comes Jesus four days late. And how many understand that Jesus only shows up when it's too late? That's how I know he was a brother because he only shows up when it's too late. Jesus comes up along the roadside and when he finally makes it to Bethany, he's greeted by Lazarus' heartbroken sister, Martha, and she tells Jesus as she runs up to him and puts her hand on her hip like black women do when they mean what they say and points her finger and says, if you had been here, my brother would not have Death had painfully closed a loving chapter of the relationship she shared with her brother. Death had removed her hope that an alternate possibility for Lazarus existed. Jesus had showed up too late and now Lazarus and his sisters are incarcerated by the impossible. They're suffering their own Good Friday experience. And the outcome of this excruciating experience would have been different if only Jesus had showed up on time. How many of you have had the door seemingly closed forever on your situation? It looks like there's no way out of your current circumstance. You've thrown your hands up in surrender. It's too late for anything to be done. So you come to accept that it is what it is. Jesus, had you shown up, my house wouldn't have been foreclosed on. Had you been there, I wouldn't have lost my job. Had you been here, my mother would not have died. Had you been here, my car would not have been repossessed. I wouldn't have lost the opportunity. Things would be different, Jesus, if you had only showed up on time. But Jesus responds to Martha's declaration with a revelation of who he is and his own declaration that death cannot defeat him. And he said, mm -mm, well, Martha, you obviously have not been to Sunday school lately because if you had been there, you would know that you're going to see your brother again. And then she said, I know I'm going to see him in the last resurrection. And Jesus said, let me give you a theological perspective that you had not considered. I am. Lord have mercy. Uh, I am the resurrection. Come on, Brother Shelton, put me in E flat. Let's close this thing here. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe on me. 
though he were dead yet shall he live you see in this good friday world of painful contradictions resurrection reveals the person and the power of jesus in the midst of the worst that the forces of death can muster no wonder he said in Matthew 16 and 18 that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Bless his name. I'm reminded uh, when someone asked Dr. Johnny Ray Youngblood in New York uh, why he was building a new church and a housing complex in a depressed community in Brooklyn that had been written off as dead. And Dr. Youngblood said something profound and he responded and said, I'm building it here because resurrection works best in graveyards. Y'all didn't get it. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, resurrection uh, works best uh, in graveyard. Uh, it works best in dry and broken places. Um, God works best uh, in places where hope is gone, uh, where despair has set in, uh, where trouble uh, is on every hand. Uh, and I found out the secret on trouble. Uh, somebody ought to ask me, Bishop, what's the secret on trouble? Uh, trouble uh, will walk in your house, um, sit down in your living room, uh, put his feet up on your ottoman. Uh, trouble uh, will mess with your children. Uh, trouble uh, will get all up in your marriage. Um, uh, trouble uh, will show up on your job. Uh, trouble uh, will get all in your relationships. Uh, Trouble will mess with your money. Nah. Trouble will show up in church uh, on Sunday morning. Nah. But the secret I found out on nah, trouble. Nah. I'm so glad. Trouble. It don't last. Uh, always. Uh, yeah. Yes. Jesus comes uh, to the grave side of Lazarus uh, bless his name uh, and he prays a little prayer uh, and he says father uh, I thank you uh, because you hear me always uh, but for these uh, that stand by uh, in other words I have no doubt uh, about your power uh, but there's some doubters in the crowd uh, there's some naysayers in the crowd uh, there's some haters in the crowd uh, and for these uh, that stand by uh, I need you to work a miracle uh, sometime uh, God will show up uh, in your situation uh, for these uh, for these uh, that said it'll never work out uh, for these uh, who thought you were dead uh, for these uh, who thought you were defeated uh, for these uh, who scandalize your name uh, for these uh, that stand by uh, and then Jesus said uh, oh, uh, the stone away uh, I came uh, to tell somebody uh, he's still uh, rolling away stones uh, he can roll uh, the stone away uh, from your dead uh, dry situation he can roll the stone away from that dead relationship he can roll the stone away from your dead credit score the Lord he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask all I can think I gotta leave your pastor's counsel but can I ask you a question won't he do it won't he do it won't he pick you up 
Won't he uh, turn you around? Uh, won't he place your feet uh, on solid ground? Uh, if you believe it, uh, say it. Yeah. yeah. Anybody in the house tonight that says I got a praise because I know God can do it 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 resurrection of Jesus Christ we have hope if you're able to stand stand in God's presence mm. hallelujah hallelujah at the right time Christ died While one would not be willing to die for an unrighteous man, or hardly willing to die for a righteous person, the scripture says at the right time Christ died for all of us. It's through his death that we have resurrected possibilities. That whatever we're facing tonight, the preacher encouraged us that we must realize we have to go through Good Friday. But if you hang in there just long enough, just look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, hang in there long enough, you have an Easter resurrected Sunday morning. And y'all know we're in a Baptist church. It's going to be early in the morning when it comes. 
you're in the sanctuary tonight for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life if you're watching us online you can call the church and one of our deacons are willing to pray for you willing to answer questions you may have we're going to ask pastors you can stand in the aisles all pastors if you can stand in the aisles if possible that anyone who's in the sanctuary tonight and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ we're here to receive you we're here to receive you we're here to receive you I have an aisle there for a pastor please if you're a pastor just keep walking I have an aisle there for another pastor if you're in the sanctuary tonight my brothers and sisters we want to receive you him Lord of all for we love him more than anything we love him we love him more 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 than anything oh, I just want to say that I love you, love you more than now we sing it together I love you Jesus Come on, give it to him. I worship. I worship and adore. Just one. Just one to tell. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More. Wanna tell you? Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. More than this whole world, oh, I love you. Worship and Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you. For Bishop Swan, we thank you for the word that you sent through him to deliver to us this night. Whatever we contend with, whatever we wrestle with, whatever we're fighting against, help us to know we can make it another day. By the power you give us, that we place our complete confidence, our complete faith, 
I complete trust in you. For you are our Lord, you are our Savior, you are our God, you are our Redeemer, you are our Healer. And God, we declare tonight that we love you more than anything. For you brought us through all the dangers we've seen and the dangers we could not see. So tonight we give you glory. Tonight we give you praise. Tonight we raise the anthem to you that we can make it through the pain because joy will come in the morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's give God his praise in the sanctuary. Amen. 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 While you remain standing, if we can give God the praise for Bishop Swan and the word that he's delivered to us tonight. Amen. We ask uh, that you put your hands together and welcome our president, Pastor Catherine Cummings. Let's give God the praise for her. Won't you give God a hat clap of praise? For God is worthy to be praised. My God, today, you've seen evidence of a resurrection faith in a Good Friday world. As we all know, Bishop Talbert Swan buried his, his very own uncle, Bishop Talbert Swan, one this week and preached that funeral. And yet, the gospel continues to lift him up and work in him and through him so we bless you sir for all that you have poured out this week and in the past few weeks beloved tomorrow we have the lift every voice lecture series uh at six o'clock at spring of hope kojic church you'll find that online next week we'll be right back here at mount zion where the angel of this house pastor reverend dr atu white will be bringing the word of god you don't want to miss it my brother is authentic he's real most of all he loves the lord so let us continue to pray for one another let us love one another won't you tell your neighbor i love you and there's nothing you can do about it tell your other neighbor god loves you and there's nothing you can do about it and so now that we receive the word of the lord that has healed us today and that we've received the love from our family and friends near and far. May the peace and the love of Jesus Christ be with you this day and forevermore. May the power of the Holy Ghost indwell, enfold you, and encourage you, embolden you to do what the gospel of Jesus Christ says do. And Lord, may you watch between us as we go to our respective places loving you more and more each day and the people of god said amen amen go in peace to love and serve the lord thanks be to god